Good morning. It's Scott Fortunoff. Here, I'm in the man cave at Missouri Star, and uh, I'm here with Rob Appel. He's not on yet, but I will introduce you to him. Uh, I'm really excited to be here speaking with him, and we found a nice quiet time, uh, nice and early, and we're kind of in his little home where all the husbands hang out, and uh, they just chill out. There's about seven of them right now on their phones and, and resting. Um, so anyway, I'm here with Rob. Rob is so energized, uh, he's inspiring. He, he makes me look like a slow talker. I, I was chugging uh, Red Bulls and Coke all morning so I could uh, keep up with him. And uh, just excited to learn about him and, and see what we could figure out and figure out how to get more men sewing. So without further ado, meet Rob Appel. Here we go. Wait, let me get your face. All right, let's see. All right, perfect. Good Fantastic. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. Don't you love technology this way? Yes, this is perfect. So let's just start off. Tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. I did read up about you a lot. So right. I do know a bunch of stuff, but I don't know if my fans do. And cool. people want to learn about you. They love see, meeting all the famous stars, and you were definitely a star. Um, so give us a little history, how you got into sewing. and, and Sure. What's going on with that? Super cool. And I think your idea of uh, red bulling up and caffeinating yourself uh, is a good idea because I like to be known as the caffeinated quilter. Uh, I'll try to keep slow today, uh, but I have just poured myself a fresh cup of uh, old coffee, so it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm super passionate about what I do. I got to be the luckiest person in the entire quilting industry. Um, you know, I think Jenny Doan is one of the most amazing people and I'm working at Man Sewing's part of uh, Missouri Star now. Uh, that's where the idea came from. But I say I'm the luckiest because they did all the hard work and then I just get to come in and do out tutorials. So I, I was thinking about some of the history too. About 20 years ago, 97, uh, I was goofing off, supposed to be going to college, was falling in love, living out of a van, that kind of stuff. Hair down my back, you know. Yeah. And um, my mom said... Surfing? Oh, I love to surf, snowboard, skateboard, uh, board sports are my thing. And I got a fly flying around my nose. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was basically coming around, uh, coming home from goofing off and my mom had just gone from the manager to the owner of a quilt shop. So uh, she was really excited, but she was really into home decor. And there was an opportunity where the local sewing machine dealership, uh, they were ready to retire, you know, just age and a little bit of health issues. And so we decided to bring in a FOF sewing machine dealership. And one of the rules with that brand was you have to have a technician on board. So I got to go to like this three day school and learn how to take sewing machines apart and put them back together. How old were you then? Uh, let's see, I'm 45 now, so, so I would have right. been 25. Wow. Yeah, right on. I'm 45 also. Fantastic. And I think we look great, don't I? Don't we? <laughs> you look way better than I <laughs> No way, man. No you way. You look way better than I do. Uh, it's a California in you, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm not getting as much time in California as I'd like anymore. Uh, Wait, one second. You don't, you don't have, oh, sorry. You don't have this. Where are we at? You don't have oh, this. No, See yeah. that? Gray beard. But here's the problem, Scott. The reason I don't have it is mine's not even that full and it's more gray. <laughs> so that's why I'm not wearing it. <laughs> All right, so okay. so you became the technician for yeah, the store. Exactly. Okay, tell us where this was. Okay, what? Morro Bay, California, and the Very cool nice. thing was is it's a shop called the Cotton Ball, and this shop opened in 1969 in this little town that became a big quilting community. And so the reason I say that is I was a young dude when guys weren't doing any sewing and quilting publicly. And I wasn't real well accepted at first, but once I was accepted at the shop and by the local guilds, then the industry was like, well, if the cotton ball likes Rob, because the cotton ball had been around for so long, because here, this is now, uh, let's see, my first quilt pattern came out in 2001, but the shop opened in 69. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so the vendors, we've been working with these vendors for years and years. And so all of a sudden I had the industry friends and my industry friends were more the manufacturing side, the fabric creators, the, the fabric vendors because my mom was always, every time a, a salesman would come to the shop, as actually a lot of them were sales ladies at that point because there was that's what the guys were doing, but there weren't even that many guys doing that. And I remember a couple of specific ones. So, hi, Cheryl, I love you if you're watching. But anyway, so she'd- Who's out, that Cheryl? Cheryl Osborne. <laughs> she'd bring out, uh, was, uh, she'd bring out the, my stack of old sketches and drawings and she'd be like, Cheryl, don't you think Rob would be a, fabric fa a fabulous fabric designer? And Cheryl would be, yeah, no, I don't think so really. <laughs> but so my mom was always pushing to get me involved because she just saw, I, 
she just saw that I'm a free spirit and that this would be like a fantastic thing for me, you know. So when did you learn how to quilt? Then I assume it was your mother that taught you? No, actually my mom doesn't quilt much. Sorry okay. mom, she's home deck. Um, her version of quilting is taking large pieces of home de decorator fabric together and big squares and tying them together with decorative yarns and things. She's done that for both of our kids and, and uh, fantastic. But no, the quilt shop taught me to quilt, but also, Okay, but so, just being around. And yeah, I hope you've got like ten hours for this video because I mean, if you're gonna let me tell my whole day it's story, okay. it's okay. Right. Whatever, we'll see when the phone yeah, the battery yeah, dies. Yeah, 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 we'll have to let it go. We'll and get we can continue court. it another day. There you go. Okay, so um, try to uh, make it go a little faster. Is uh, I, so I'm working with the sewing machines and people are making quilts in the shop, and at the same point. People are starting to do like fusible web, raw edge applique, landscape quilts. And I'm looking at Hawaiian shirt fabric and I'm looking at pulling the fish and the surfers out and making these cool tropical scenes like a Robert Wyland or a Christian Lassen landscape. You know, that they, those are painters, but I wanted to do it in fabric. And so I basically started just fussy cutting or collage quilting and I would make like strips of fabric in the background to make life easy. So I'd so sky fabric to surface water fabric to underwater fabric and then I'd come in and I'd build like coral reef scene. And living in California, I started traveling to quilt guilds and talking about this new form of art quilting. And I was also doing sewing machine technical work and learning to do patchwork, but also learning to do machine quilting. And I love free motion machine quilting. I assume you were in the minority, so how did how did the people treat you as, you know, the man sewer? Well, I think the fort, I was fortunate to be on the central and southern coast of California so all the guilds through there loved it because it was tropical beach related stuff had I been out here in Missouri I would have starved to death you know because it just wasn't it, it's just now kind of catching on like when I show my trunk show uh, tomorrow afternoon there'll be people that have seen, I've never seen a quilt like that before and it'll be one of the quilts I made 15 years ago um, just because I, it, genres are different things are regional and that's kind of cool about quilting uh, but yeah if I wouldn't have been in California it wouldn't have taken off I don't think okay so so one thing I just we, we got to hit on is men sewing yeah you know I, listen I'm fourth generation in my right. family business and you know I see we have half the market tapped with the women right and we're leaving you know may, not the whole market of men right. on tap but What's your view? You know, how do you think we get more men sewn? Because one of my concepts is the sew revolution, which is right. basically re the numbers are going down for quilters, whether they're dying or the shop near them is closing. Right. Or they don't have access to fabric anymore. Maybe they don't, they don't want to buy online. Maybe right. their local shop closed. But I'm trying to rebuild right, and right. get people to start sewing. And, right. You know, listen, if we could figure out a way to attack the men, that would be op open up a whole new venue for us so you know how, how are you perceived by men do you do you think you inspire men to quilt or is it just a woman's world that we're in um gosh there are so many different ways to answer <laughs> it so uh, i'll start with um there is a whole group even on facebook called men who quilt okay and i have been approached by several of them uh members of that that group at different trade shows and i always am made to feel very accepted i actually have been thanked for kind of being a spokesperson for men who quilt uh, because I'm just making it fun and cool. I, I think the big problem is, is it's not about plumbing. Like I don't use that portion of my body when I make my quilts. I use this portion of my body and my hands. And so folks like guys that make quilts because it's a different style of quilt making, just like folks like technology in quilts because it's a different style than hand quilting. I don't think it needs to be any different than that. The other f problem, and I get this on my show a lot, well, not a lot, but enough, I, I, I hear the comments, it hurts my feelings actually, when a guy will comment, hey, I came to man sewing and there's nothing manly here because that day I'm showing a quilt and maybe my colors are soft, uh -huh. you know? And, and I'm like, yeah, dude, but if you did this in like hard contrast, it's just a giant, you know, star. So if you did this in, Batiks, you know, are your favorite colors. There's nothing unmanly that sounds more about like this. A, that sounds more like a, a kind of an excuse. Yeah, and I think guys are scared. I even heard somebody ask recently, do you mean I don't have to give up my man card to be making quilts? And I think that's the problem. I think men themselves think that there's something unmanly about sewing. So we could go like way back to the era you need of to change that. Yeah, like what about the dudes that were making fishing nets like way back in time, like like the biblical times? Those were mostly guys. Like, I mean, there is rumor, and I don't know this for a fact, so I have to say rumor that a sewing needle was a, such a precious tool that in the era where 
men did all the work, only the men were allowed to have the sewing needle. So why are men so scared now to have a, it's, it's just an awesome art. I mean, the, 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 this is the funnest, coolest art form ever. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm, I think the best way to get men involved is just to not make it so stereotypical and make it like, it's just I a cool I thing. I wonder if there are a lot of men out there that are kind of like closet quilters at home. Oh yeah. And they just don't want to be, you know, seen by their friend as the guy who likes the quilt. <laughs> I'm, I'm meeting a lot of guys, yeah. And, and I'll tell you this one, this is, you know, my friends love to tease me. I, like I said, I surf all the time, you know, and people, hey, you heading to the yarn barn today? You know, they just harass me constantly about being a quilt maker. And that same guy, Mitch, I love you, he has called me <laughs> <laughs> asked me to fix his flip-flops, his lawn chair, his nail badge, because he's a carpenter. And, oh man, I charge him double just for the teasing I have to take in the water for it. Have you seen more men coming through here at Missouri? Absolutely. Or, yes? Yes, because the, the message at the Missouri Star Quilt Company is that everybody should quilt and anybody can. And this is just all about having fun. And so, because they really feature a lot of videos that are really beginner friendly, when, and it's online, so you can do this in the privacy of your own closet, right. you know? Yes. Then, then it actually gives a lot of guys the excuse to like try this out. It's just another art form, it, especially if you like math and you're a dude, you know, like this is a great art form because yeah. it can be very geometric if you totally. want it to be. Totally, I've yeah. seen a lot of very, you know, I, a lot of times I meet people that are super smart and they do see that mathematic part of it. Yeah. Um, but all right, I, I don't think we're gonna change the world here and get all the men uh, sewing. Not and, yet. And I don't we'll know how many trying. men I have following me. They're, right. they're not that many. So I, I want to hear more about how you ended up at Missouri Star. Right. I think that's neat. You know, a little bit of history, how, how sure. that happened, when it happened. Sure. Um, um, how you felt when they said, hey, Rob, why don't you come and work with us? Right, right. Um, well, I'll tell you, uh, the first thing is I really feel like it was an answer to prayer. You know, it was at a time in my life where I w had just sold off the quilt shop. My mom had decided to retire a few years earlier. Um, I tried to maintain the shop. I was traveling. I was really blessed to have a lot of gigs and um, my focus wasn't on the shop and the shop wasn't doing well. Oh, there we go. What did I tell you? Did it fall Sorry. asleep? Okay, there we go. We're back. Cool. Sorry. Are we still rolling? We got yeah, a couple extra still, flies with us now, right? Yeah. My, my, my selfie stick cool. is always problematic. I love it. Uh, you know, but as I always like to say, it's live. It's live. This is it. what we're doing. It's, it's not about, all right, so now, now I'm going to have to hold it up because now it's totally not cooperating, which is awesome. Um, but all right, let's go. We'll do, we'll do it that way and I'll just hold that position. But it, you know, it's not about the, the video or the content. Right. I, I don't know. I, I'm just going to jump right. in. I recently had a challenge. When I go to quilt shops, I do tours of the shops with the right. owners. And uh, one of the things we do is, is they get a chance to show everyone their shop. And right. I tell them, it's not what you look like. It's right. about the content. The people want to see right. your shop, what you have to offer. Right. And the video is the video. I'm not a famous actor. I right. don't pretend to right. be one. If my camera falls, I just deal with it. Right. And just keep plugging away. So we're just going to keep plugging away and we'll figure it out. Um, but all right, so how do you get to Missouri Star? Okay, so let's see. I left off at answer to prayer, I think. Uh, Mom sold me the shop. Uh, I was ready to sell the shop to somebody else, which we did. So the shop's still open. Um, and I was an independent. I was traveling, doing quilt guilds, uh, dealerships, you know, teaching everywhere I could. And I got a phone call one day from Nancy, uh, who's the gal who buys the fabric for Nancy Missouri. Nancy Rosenberg, Exactly. Yeah. And uh, she and my mom are great friends, so I always say it's not what you know, but who you know. Exactly. And uh, so Jenny and the family have the idea of we, what would happen if we put a guy on camera because we're getting a lot of men that are emailing in saying we appreciate having free videos on YouTube, like can you do more for us? And so they said, yeah, let's put a guy out there. Now, I don't think MSQC, Missouri Star, knew what they were getting themselves into. You know, I love that movie High Fidelity where Jack Black gets hired to work in a record store like part-time a couple days a week and he never stops coming to work. But he also starts like running the customers off because of his crazy personality. So <laughs> yeah. they gave me the keys to the studio and they let Jake, the cameraman, and Jenny's son, who's amazingly creative, say, just go nuts with this stuff. And so we've just been having a ton of fun, but I'm a quilt maker at heart. So they hired me to mostly do like garment and bag related sewing, like more sewing sewing, hence the name man sewing. Was there any trepidation for you to do this? Were yeah. you thinking like, will this be terrified? Will people oh, really like no, it? No, because I'd already spent, you know, gosh, at that point, 15 years being one of the guys that was making quilts and I was accepted enough that I wasn't scared of that side anymore. I was terrified of myself. I was terrified of what I run out of ideas, what I burn out, what I, get big headed when I just get carried away with all of it and um, you know it 
it, what I found so far is every idea leads to like three new ideas. That's a question that people are often asking me, like, how do you stay new ideas? And it's like, uh, a lot of times what you see on the videos was not what I intended. So like that means that that idea is still out there. I try to create something and in the process, you know, the design took its own path yep. and I liked where that was going. So I let it do its thing. And so I still have an idea on the back burner that was the original starting point for is the flash on. Is that what just happened? No, no I'm okay, not being flashed. Am I ultra bright? Am I glowing? Your face, yeah, your face just got bright. I don't know. <laughs> the aura. But again, it's just, just the video, the, just the content. People want to see you. People want to hear what you have to say. So I, what year was that when that when you started? It was working? about four years ago. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, this and is how my is, third full birthday match. How has it all been? And like, has it? You Amazing. Know, what's been going? On? Like, has it just changed your life? It has. And actually, that's what Nancy. The, I, those were her exact words. She warned me. She says, "If you want this interview, it's awesome, but this will very possibly change your life." And it really did because um, obviously with internet and YouTube and already having the power of the Missouri Star behind me, um, I, like we're at 140,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's awesome. And that's really neat because, uh, you know, when I go back outside this afternoon, there's going to be folks that want to give hugs and take pictures and they're just excited. And what I heard yesterday in meeting folks is like, they're like, some of your ideas are so wild. We just love it. Where do you come up with these ideas? And so it's how often are you doing videos? Uh, it's every Monday we put out a, a new video uh -huh. and I come out to Missouri about every other month for a full week and I try to capture between eight and ten. Oh, are you still living in California? Did Absolutely. I oh, yeah, I know I'm still that. Oh, yeah, I that way I can surf every day. The surf in Missouri is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> All right, so yeah. so yesterday I put out a post and I asked people, you know, for questions because um, I wanted to, you know, just you know, I like That's to a great hear, idea. hear what my fans are asking. Yeah, so, this is awesome. So what let's do we have? see. Um, here, okay, I'll give you a, a lob. Here's okay. an easy one. If you did a two color quilt, what would the two colors be? Oh my goodness. And, oh, this is the only two color quilt I can ever do in my life? No, just, just this time. Okay, just well, this week. Well, what colors this are week, you feeling? I always go with blue and orange. Blue and orange. Yeah, those. I, I even had a little Honda mini scooter that I rode around town that was painted blue and orange with a big wave design on it. Because that to me, that's the ocean and the sunset always together. That's where blue and orange come from. Okay, and that, complimentary that's a good colors. answer. There you go. Um, you know, trends. What What are you seeing as the trends, or, or what ha What have you seen change in the four years as far as trends? And you know, maybe where do you think they're going? Or you know, are you trying? Are you creating the trends, or are you following the trends? Oh my gosh, no! Sorry. I'm sure I'm not. <laughs> no, that's a great. Great question. I'm sure I'm not creating the trends. Um, if I was creating a trend, it would be enthusiasm about new process. Um, the last couple of years, we actually really tried to focus on teaching process through projects in quilting, and that also became overwhelming to me um, because I was trying to incorporate so much, and that's hard to film and hard to teach in a short video. So um, right now, I'm really going back to my roots, applique, but. Before when my patchwork, it was like, like I said, sewing a horizon line, sky and, and water together, where now I want to do things like I did in one of my gear quilts recently, where I make a 300 million little half square triangles to make a great background, and then I build an applique on top of it. So working together so that I have fun, that this would be just a fantastic quilt on its own, but then if you want to add applique, what kind of applique can we bring forward? I still love my raw edge applique. I have an iPad right now, so I'm also trying to work with how to build in my technology. So recently I took a picture of a quilt, drew applique, printed it out. It was now actual size because it was drawn from on the quilt and it printed it actual size and wham, I was ready to go to my fusible web. And so I'm just goofing off. And So uh, let's talk about innovation. Do you see yeah. any innovations that, you know, you get excited about, you know, that'll help you make quilts faster or better or, um, you know, things yeah, like that? Yeah, absolutely. And now I feel like I'm a total salesman, but I created a rotary cutter a year and a half ago, a 14 millimeter rotary cutter for cutting freestyle applique. Okay. And it's already even been knocked off, which we always take as a huge compliment, totally. right? Yeah. So, um, and, and that's huge because I really, so years ago, years ago, I saw the need for using rotary cutters for cutting applique because of the speed, the efficiency, the clean line on the, on the fused edges and stuff. And so um, I'm really pleased that that seems to be taking off. Um, Who is that Missouri Star branded? Well, it's, it's branded under man sewing. Okay. It's called the Shark Applicator because I put a dorsal fin on it for safety. That way you can put a lot of good pressure with your finger. Okay. If, if you have it or once you get it, hold it like a pen. It's not meant to be held like a rotary cutter, right? Like a rotary cutter, we're, we're stiff in the wrist. You don't, you don't have, you're, are you going to whip one out? You're no, I, I, no, I are should you, have it in my are pocket. Are you packing right no, now? No, I'm not packing you're right not now. Packing, I should. Sure? No, we're in the state of Missouri. I don't have a license for it. You know? <laughs> no. So, yeah, watch 
you to hold that cutter like a pen. Don't hold it like a cutter. I want you to be free. So, anyway. All right. So, so, so here, here's a good question. Yeah, we're yeah. going to get some levity in here. Uh-oh. Here you go. You ready? Yep. Do you ever sleep? Absolutely not. No, I do. Um, and I've been sleeping a ton this trip because I've been able to just focus on the videos and this birthday bash that we're doing. Um, I used to go to bed at midnight, get up at 6. Now I'm trying to go to bed at 11, get up at 6. I do hit the ground running. I, I feel blessed to get up every morning. My wife and kids are all in the public school system. So we have them out the door by about 7.30. And um, I work out of the house when I'm home. And So yeah, I do find that rest and health, that's something else if I could bring into our quilting world, uh, conversations about diet and conversations about stre stretching, exercise, I think it's really important. I do a lot of standing while I sew because I think it's better for my physical yep. structure. Okay, so so now this is always a question, and, and, and oddly enough, it, I always ask myself the same question. Do you dream fabric? So for me, you know, being in the business, I didn't really dream much about fabric until we bought Free Spirit, oddly right. enough. So I, I don't know, something clicked in my brain. Maybe it's the stress and the other companies weren't as stressful, but do you right. dream about fabric? And if you do, do you dream about projects or are, are you just, you know, like how does that, you know, what is your dream like? Right. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't seem to remember my dreams. I'm going to go deep with all of you here um, because with the blessings of man sewing also came being super overwhelmed. I mean, I hit a period a couple years ago where I tell people I got really depressed. Um, part of it was I was working on a big fundraiser project that was going well, but I carried a lot of baggage with it. Uh -huh. And um, so in talking to a counselor, we found I wasn't sleeping well. So sleep is important, but sleeping well right. is more important. It's like if you have sleep apnea, it's yes. like you're not getting good sleep. Yes, because we yeah. realized that when I realized I couldn't repeat back what my dreams were like. But where I get my dream inspiration, it's more of a daydream. I am spending time every day doing some stretching or some yoga. I'm also a Jesus follower, so I do some devotions every morning. Very nice. And often I feel like my brain wanders off. And just recently our pastor talked about, that's okay, if you're in prayer and your mind wanders off, God might want you to be listening to where you're going. Okay. And, and so at any rate, when that happens and I'm doing my yoga or I'm doing my devotions and a new design idea comes in, I don't try to discard it. I don't try to get back to my breathing or my focus. I try to spend a few minutes with that idea first and then I let it go because I'm not getting the dream state in my sleep. I'm getting it in more my early morning waking period. Does, does um, quilting and sewing, does that you know, help you reduce your stress, you think? Or Absolutely. Are you feeling stress doing it and no, pressure to finish no, and pressure to have it perfect? And no, the perfect doesn't matter because I've never made one that's perfect. I don't, and I make one a week and they're still not perfect. Um, the stress for me is a time management issue. Um, I think I'm ADHD. I've never been tested, so I hope I'm not being offensive to you. You and me both. Yeah, right? NOC, NOCD. Yeah, right, and I always make the joke I couldn't sit still long enough to take the test, you know? Um, <laughs> But so the days I'm most overwhelmed are when I open the boxes from the vendors and I have all of the supplies. It may or may not be everything I need for a two months worth of sewing to be ready for all of these projects. And I, I just can't separate them. So I learned, I built a bin system. I organize it that way. Um, so the stress of quilting is more the calendar of it and not knowing how long will this quilt physically take. So I push hard to get a lot of the bigger projects done early in my, my month so that the last weeks can be more dedicated to the, the free printables we do and all of these different kinds of things because there's a lot of work involved in doing the tutorials and I'm actually making two quilts because I make it to be on the back wall and then I got to make all the parts and pieces for the magic TV. So it sounds like you're really feeling the stress of the job. And uh, not of the quilting per yes, se, which absolutely. is normal, you know, normal yes. day to day yes. stress of doing the job. Yep. You're not just like, hey, I'm yep. gonna go make a quilt, yep. and you know, when it's done, it's done. Yep. You have deadlines, yep. and, but here's, and that's definitely pressure. Here's the gift my stress relief is my job, yeah. the other side of it. So yeah. while I'm cutting squares and I'm rogue sewing strips together, or when I'm sitting there doing the free motion and I'm still doing probably 85 to 90 percent of all the sewing for the show. I'm just in that Zen mode. The, the music is super loud in the studio. Uh, I have to cut it out when I send in the B-roll videos because it's so loud the editors just can't handle it, you know? And I am there focusing and thinking of the new projects I want to do. So yeah, it is a high paced job, um, but man, I'm sure I'm not dealing with the stress. I have a buddy that's a firefighter, you know? I, I got actually several buddies that are firefighters. I, I, every day they go to work, I tell them to be safe and I thank them for what they're doing because the stress those guys are doing is not what I'm doing. I am doing art arts and crafts, I yes. mean, I should be able to manage my stress. All right, so, so let's go some more, yeah. more Sorry, questions. I told you I was long-winded. No, it's, it's okay. Um, 
what is your most rewarding project that you've done? Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, I just finished uh, turning in $25,000 to Operation Homefront for a project that started uh, several years ago. It was a, it's a waving flag, uh, American flag quilt with the uh, Marines from Iwo Jima applique on the front. And it was an island boutique project to raise money for Operation Homefront. And then um, I had decided I wanted to raise like 25 grand with this quilt. And so I set off uh, giving trunk shows and talking about the whole program. And our veterans, the money goes all to our That's veterans. That's awesome. It was that makes me so happy because one of the biggest things for me as a fourth generation owner is doing charitable things Amen. all the time. Um, yeah. One of the things I do, I don't know if you know, um, when they had those storms in Texas and Florida last year, I decided I was going to give sewing machines away that I bought. Right. Um, in one year, I gave away a hundred sewing machines awesome. to people suffering through tragedy yeah. and hardship in their life. And the stories and the rewards that I get are, are just amazing and yeah. extremely sad. So yeah. I love that you do that. I yeah. think that's awesome. And, and that's really one great component about our entire industry. They yes. are so giving. I mean, here we're, we're making at our booth, we're making pillows for yeah. the local homeless shelter. Yeah. Yesterday on my Facebook Live, uh, we went through the retreat center and I showed everyone that they were making those right. uh, sanitary um, napkins mm -hmm. for, for the women in Africa. Oh, it's yeah. just amazing. Absolutely. Um, so what do you find is a, a big challenge for you? Uh, in quilting? In, at work or in quilting? Um, I would probably say the biggest challenge for me is trying to stay unique, creative, and not take other folks' designs. There is so much content out there. I can't check it all. Like I try to run what I think is a new idea through Google and everything else, but I have no idea what everyone else is doing out there. And there's nothing more heartbreaking than putting out a video and then getting an email like, hey buddy, I think that was my idea kind of thing. Now we haven't had that happen. Early on, I mixed up somebody's name in a video and I forgot to give credit proper in another video. So I've, ha I've had those challenges. Um, so just trying to steer away from stealing anybody's idea because it's kind of hard to make a living in quilting yeah. and so i'd hate to you know and because i get so much uh, attention now like so again my, my result everyone's watching yeah. you and yeah. everyone's very critical so yeah. I, have a, I have a question so are is man sewing a company is that like who you, knows no. it, yeah yeah so man sewing is a sister company to the missouri star quilt company technically the doan family owns the man sewing and I am the host and the creator of the content. Okay. Although that means that I work with our marketing team, our products team, and we all put our ideas together in a big fishbowl when we come up with the best possible tutorials. Okay. And then from that point, they let it be my style, my look, my feel, because it's just, it's my personality. And we think that it's a great blend. I don't want to Who sound Who owns the videos? Oh, Missouri Star. Missouri Star. Yeah, Missouri. yeah. And okay. so like, but I get royalties on the patterns we create that go with the videos. Mm -hmm. um, I was about ready to try to get my rotary cutter out on my own, but I didn't have the funding. So Missouri Star and Rob Appel, myself, are co-owners of that rotary cutter okay. because they funded it for me at the right time. And so I just said, let's just go 50-50 on this. I just feel like life's easiest that way. Um, well, they're good partners. So amen. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about like some of the tools. And do you have a favorite fabric, a favorite solid, a favorite tool, a, your sewing machine? Can give us some. Sure. Throw out some names. Okay. Sure. Okay. Got it. Um, and, well, and they better be free spirit studio. Yeah. Really blind oh, right. and okay. You want a free spirit <laughs> story, Scott? I should send you a picture when I get home of my original. Uh, I actually was a free spirit designer way back in the early days um, when free spirit uh, Donna Wilder was the president. Yeah. And, and it was through Fabric Traditions. And it was like Val Wells and Amy Butler, and I think Ricky Timms had just signed, and Jane Sassaman, and Bill and Weeks Ringel. That was just, it was just like four or five of us. And oh I did God. a collection. I, I didn't even know Oh that. yeah, yeah. And the collection was terrible. I had no idea how to design. I still have no idea how to design fabric. Um, but what I do still have, and I use it almost, well not daily, it's a short board, but I have a surfboard that has a stripe of Free Spirit Rob Appel fabric in it and the Free Spirit logo fiberglass into the board. That's I'll send you cool. pictures when That's I get home cool. with it, yeah. Um, but so I love batiks. Um, so if I'm gonna just, like, I, I don't know if there's a brand that I love so much. I mean, all of the vendors are really, really good to me. Yep. Um, but I do like batiks. If I had, like, if I had to go into the bush with nothing but my sewing machine, a Bowie knife, and a yard of fabric, I would take batik. You know, it, it's a more dense thread count. Um, it's gonna not shrink in the washing because the way it's been handled, there's a lot of benefits to it. Doesn't ravel as much, that kind of stuff. Um, when it comes to sewing machines, 
This is kind of a hard one for me. Um, what do you use? I, right now, I'm using a Baby Lock Jane for almost everything. Okay. Um, Baby Lock sent me a couple sewing machines, no strings attached. It's what's on my set because it's a straight stitch only machine. It's solid enough that I can sew on this thing eight and 10 hours a day, but I can also free motion quilt on it because it has the head space. But machines come and go all the time. So if you're listening to this because you're thinking about buying a sewing machine, if you're free motion quilting, head space and a single straight stitch, I believe is better. And a oscillating bobbin right below, you know, a, a vertical bobbin versus a horizontal drop in bobbin. Those are technological things that I personally make, think make free motion quilting easier, smoother, the stitch lay better. There's one less half twist in everything, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but when it comes to machines, like we try to use machines on the set that are real entry level machines because of our consumer that we're dealing with right now is often a very beginner quilter. And I was, Okay, so like I don't wanna make, I don't wanna sound negative at all, but I am coming out of a world where sewing machines were like one of the last things that people bought with the intention of servicing and repairing and servicing and repairing. Like you bought a sewing machine when I started doing sewing machine repair 20 years ago with the intention of it lasting 20 years. And nowadays there's a lot of really good $149 to $300 sewing machines out there but if your service is $129 just to have it cleaned, like, do we repair it? Right. And so it kind of, I'm also like, I'm a huge tree hugger. So what does this do to our carbon footprint? What does yeah. this do to our environment? But, but gosh, if you were just beginning sewing and I want, and I told you, you couldn't sew without a $1,500 sewing machine. Well, I'm not doing you any service either because you can do great things on a $25 sewing machine you find down the block at a yard sale, as long as it's a good sewing machine. So I want people to sew. I want people to have machines they love. Um, and I love the co the concept of, yes, we gave a lot of quilts away as well to help with the disaster relief. But when you give a machine, now you're teaching a person to fish. You're not giving a fish. And that's radical, brother. I love that, man. That's so cool. And so um, when it comes into tools, um, I usually go big because I have space at home that allows for that. And I can make small stuff in big spaces, but I can't make big stuff in small spaces. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's the kind of brain that Rob has. So um, products wise, um, I use a lot of our Missouri Star branded products because I want to test them so that when I'm out there at a workshop and somebody says, hey, you just got this new template in and I got it and, and what do you think of it? I can say I've tried it and I like it or I don't or we're going to improve or I think this is genius. Um, so I'm actually trying to use what everyone else is using because I get a lot of questions. Do you license, so you man sewing, uh -huh. do you have any license arrangements like tool, uh, besides your tool, um, anything like a sewing machine company or anything like that? No, not yet. Uh, the phone has been ringing like crazy. Okay. But, um, you know, Jenny and I have always been under the philosophy is we use what we love on our shows. And we know what we we know we sell what we use, mm -hmm. so we really want it to be genuine. We want it to be something like. Um, for, here's a perfect example. Panasonic gave me that fantastic. It's like a football shape. It's a cordless iron, mm -hmm. and I've never liked cordless irons before. So I they send me one for the set. They send me one for home, and I come out a couple months later, and the camera team Jake says, "Hey, where's that cordless iron? Are we going to use it?" I said, "No." He goes, "I thought you liked it." I said, "Oh, I think I do." And he goes, well, but aren't you using it at home? I said, yes, but I haven't used it long enough to know I believe in it yet. Okay. So like I use it for six months before it showed up on my set because it's an iron. I had to drop it a few times. I had to leave it on too long. I had to let it cool off too long, you know? And so I, you're giving it a run for- Run for, for the money. money. Yeah. Um, all right, so so here's another question. Yeah. Mine is like Jenny Doe and who, who do you, you know, aspire to or look up to in our industry, whether it's, you know, a quilt maker or a fabric yeah. designer or, yeah. you know, multiple people in those categories. Okay. Uh, besides me, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, 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 yes. I, I, that was the first thing. Well, I'm not sure those shoes may be just too big to fill. <laughs> I'm just going to go. No. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've been blessed to meet a lot of my quilting superheroes. Yeah. Um, uh, one that I haven't got to meet yet is Hollis Chatelaine. Um, she does amazing, you know, paintings and quilts and then comes back in with all the thread. Her, some of her quilts were the first quilts I saw as like, oh, you mean that we don't have to make squares and put them on beds anymore? Um, Carol Breyer Fowler is, uh, I mention her a lot in my classes. I have not got to meet her yet either. Um, she does amazing curves in patchwork. And so I say in my classes, 
process now, I'm trying to become better at sewing straight lines so I can get better at sewing curved lines. I've been working on my curves. Um, I have some of the best friends. Uh, Tula Pink and I um, are pretty fantastic friends, I think. She did me a huge solid recently. Um, so I'm blessed to have folks like that. Val Wells just called me like two minutes ago before I came to do the fa Facebook Live. She wanted to brainstorm a little bit. And so I have the best of friends out in the industry that way, helping support me and educate me and, and keep me um, inspired. So yeah, I, there's definitely a few out there that I would right, just so, love to meet. Yeah. So now I'm going to give you the other side of the question. Yeah. Have, have there ever been people who you admire that came up to you and like, wow, I'm so excited to meet you. And you were like, wow, I'm cha, you know, like where you were like, wow, wow, oh, shoot, shoot. All right. Sorry. Oh, good. so have any of my heroes approached me and said, um, yeah, and you've been like, Hey, I've been wanting to meet you. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm, you know, Gosh, it's okay. Kind of like the reversal. I, yeah, and I can't do this. I already turned in red, right? I can't do this one without bragging. It wasn't that she came up to me, but um, in two conversations, uh, one was with Tula uh, Pink and one was with Alex Anderson. Um, it was neat to, you know, Alex Anderson, when I was growing up, she had a show that was on Home and Garden, if you don't know this. I mean, this was on cable television. Yep. And I got to be on one of her very last episodes of Simply Quilts. And then I got to be on her and Ricky's show on online when they first started doing that. So I just always, you know, held Ricky and Alex both on this pedestal, you know. And then in the last couple of years, Ricky has called me and said, hey, I've got an idea I want to run by you. Alex has called me with a couple of personal favors and it's just like, you mean that the people that I used, I, I still consider superstars in the quilting world, they are considering me a peer. So yeah, I, I, I can't not blush when I say that, but yeah, there's some folks out there that I have really held dear uh, in, in that higher echelon of quilt makers that allow me to have their personal cell phone numbers. Okay, so yeah. so you mentioned you have kids, and yeah. you know one of the other concepts of my Sew Revolution is to try to get more kids So yes. because obviously, um, you know, the children are our future, you yes. know, that song. Yes, um, I do. So, you know, are your kids quilters? Um, are you teaching them or do they, are they interested in, in what <sighs> you do or not they're, so much? No, they're super interested in what they, what I do because they have to co constantly say that I'm cool in order to get, you know, the things they need in life. Um, <laughs> no, my, so my son's into music. So we spend more time playing music together than we do sewing or doing art together. My daughter is very into art. She loves to do home deck. She does a little bit of sewing, but her new thing right now is watercolor painting. Okay. So what I've learned, parents out there, new parents out there, is it's easier for me to just do what the kids want to do than to try to get the kids to do what I want to do because they're already interested. So I learned to decorate cupcakes last year because my daughter wanted to get a, cupcake, a, a piping bag, you know, and do that kind of stuff. Um, but they do spend some time in my sewing room. I would love to get my kids involved on my web business and start helping, you know, fulfillment with orders, keeping my website current. The Rob Appel website is so stale, it's not even funny, you know? And so they, they can get in there and help me with that kind of stuff. Uh, my daughter this summer and her and her friend cleaned out all of my stash. They went through all of the fabric and that was a ploy for me to one, get my closet clean, back to that bin organizing system. But secondly, I wanted her to build her stash up. She didn't have much of a stash. And so I said, listen, the first thing you get to do is you get to fill up your bin with everything you want out of my fabric. And I tell you, I have a killer stash. And what about your wife? She sews a little bit. She knows how to, but she's also a school teacher and she loves dance. That's one of her major, uh, dance and movement, I guess, are kind of her art form. And so, um, yeah, she just doesn't really have the energy to sew and quilt at the end of the night. Around the holiday times, we'll bust out a few craft projects for the for gifts and stuff. So when we started, obviously your show is man sewing. Yes. What is your f feeling on kids sewing? Obviously, I mean, are you seeing more kids coming through Missouri when, when you're here? Yes, and... I am, but I think it, it's just so necessary. Everybody that's listening, we've got to figure out more and more ways to get our kids and our teens involved. Um, it's something I'm kind of struggling with. My daughter, for example, would love to have a YouTube channel. Um, so I keep saying, well, why don't you do some sewing videos? And this is dad's way of saying I can control it because it filters through my stuff. I can control the feedback and the content and all of that. Um, I think kids sewing for kids is awesome. There's some safety issues. Like I wanted to do a video where, I, where my kids were sneaking into my sewing room. You know, we, we talked this all the way through, but we realized that's actually kind of a liability issue, teaching other kids to break into their parents' <laughs> sewing room and play with rotary cutters and irons and sewing machines. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's hugely necessary, and I truly believe if we can get teens and young, you know, adults doing it, um, because then they're safer on the internet. Like, that's just the problem. The internet's a great vehicle vehicle for education, but it's a scary place to just let your kids loose on. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's that's part of the problem I see right now with sewing on the internet. And, but yeah. So. Um... I, did you see this young lady, Charlotte, on um, Facebook that she's a video, she has a, like a cleft palate and she's making these dolls no, for, I have for these kids as well. So no. she's nine right? and I saw this video on Facebook and she's making all these dolls. Oh, so so we, we actually sure. signed her up to be a designer for us. She makes Fantastic. these dolls for all these other kids who are going through this wow. phase. Um, but listen, I, I agree. I think it would be awesome to get more kids involved. I mean, to me, that seems like a great opportunity and, you know, to try to appeal to the young kids and get home ec back in school. Absolutely. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's no easy button to just press and, and it really requires a lot of work, which, you know, we all have a lot of work already. So, um, you know, it's just not so easy. Um, all right, so we're, we're getting kind of late. Uh, let's hear. Do you have any funny stories? One of the people, actually, one of the people said they they like to laugh, and I said you're being selfish. But <laughs> do you have any, any funny fabric stories or, or anything like that? Oh, do you gosh. want to share that comes to your mind? Either? Well, I was kind of hoping my whole my whole output was kind of a funny story. <laughs> um, you know, um, let me see. Well, I'll tell my funny story on Jenny and Ron. Okay. Because good. last night at the birthday party, they were telling funny stories, and I didn't have the time to get up and do it because I knew we had a lot to do with the fireworks. So, one of the very first tri trips I come out here, it's the middle of the winter. It's snowing out. It's freezing. I arrive at Kansas City Airport about midnight. Now, that means it's about 1.15 by the time I get into Hamilton. Al Doan, Jenny's son and one of the founders of the company, picks me up. We go to the retreat center and we're, the mini retreat, and we're locked out. No problem, we go to the big retreat center and there's guests there having a sew-a-thon, so I can't stay there. Al's plan C is, no problem, you can stay in my old room at mom and dad's house. Come on, I'll take you down the road. So we go down the road to Jenny and Ron's house and he takes me upstairs, he goes, this is my old bedroom, here's the bathroom in the morning, there. I'll get you a towel, you're just fine. We'll get you settled in tomorrow, don't you worry about it. So I get up in the next morning and actually uh, got to visit with Jenny and Ron a little bit. That was great. But then, so for whatever reason, I guess my accommodations weren't quite set up. So the following day, I'm coming home. It, I think I'd been down sewing in the sewing center with all the friends that were there for the sew-a-thon or whatever. So it must have been about 9 or 10 o'clock. I'm walking up the stairs in Jenny and Ron's house and down the long hallway towards the Al's old bedroom. And here comes Jenny around the corner and she's wearing her nightgown. <laughs> and I, you know, I kind of, oh, hi, Jenny. She goes, oh, Rob, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting all night to talk to you. She goes, do you have some time to chat? And I said, well, okay, sure. So she goes, come on, put your stuff down. And I said, all right. So I put my backpack down in Al's old room. And she goes to walk around the corner and I end up in the master bedroom. And sure enough, Al, or excuse me, uh, Ron, Jenny's husband, is already in the bed with the covers. And I swear he was not wearing one of those stocking caps, but it's just that Norman Rockwell moment that he is, you know? And so Jenny crawls in bed under the covers and simultaneously, as she starts to say, why don't you have a seat? He just leans forward and pats the, t the corner of the bed. So I am now sitting on the corner of Jenny and Ron's bed. I've known her for all of a month or two, right? I've worked for her for just a few months, come out here and film a few videos. They're in their PJs. I am not, so I'm not dressed appropriately, of course. And they want to talk about quilt cruises. Jenny's gotten an opportunity to go on quilt cruises. She knows I've done a few, wants to pick my brain. We had a wonderful conversation for a couple of hours uh, up there in the, in the bedroom. And so the next morning I come downstairs, or I go to the, the film studio where, again, another one of her children and uh, his wife work. And they're, how was last night? I said, well, it was great. They said, but I kind of had the funniest thing happen. I said, you know, your mom wanted to talk, but in the, in the bedroom, and I said, I, I, I ended up on the corner of the bed and they said, oh, well, welcome to the family. All of the most important conversations happen on that corner of That's the bed. So, so yeah, that was my welcome to the family moment. And I, so I should have told it last night at the birthday bash, but uh, I'm glad I could tell it. All right, now. so it's, we're getting yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, you, you four got, hours, you I love a, it. A thousand other people to talk to. Um, this was amazing. Thank you so much. It was yeah, great man. to meet you. you I'd love to talk to you again and, and you know, see if we could do something together. I think. Um, you know, we both have good energy. Amen. So anyway, I'm signing off here. I'm going to turn it to me. Thank you, Rob. All right.
everyone. Up, oh, selfie stick issues. So anyway, we're here. We're done. We're in man sewing. I'll be around all day. If you're here in uh, Missouri, come by our booth and make a pillowcase for the local charity. Uh, today is cold. It's 66. Yesterday was 95. So today I'm obviously cold in shorts. Yesterday I was hot in shorts. Um, but thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a lot. Hope you guys watch watch Rob's show and and watch his. Um, his uh, videos, I'm sure they're amazing. I, I got to start watching them too in, in my free time. And uh, that's it. Thank you all. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Love you. Peace.